Okay, so get ready for a wild ride because this deep dive is taking us straight into the world of a movie script. You heard right. We're cracking open the script of the 1993 sci-fi action classic Demolition Man. Yeah, Stallone, Snipes, explosions, the works. But trust me, there's more to this movie than just blowing stuff up. We're going beyond the screen to see how the script built a whole future and what it says about the time it came from. It's like a time capsule from the early 90s, full of anxieties and predictions about where society was headed, all wrapped up in this really fun, high-octane package. Right. So for anyone who hasn't seen it, which if you haven't, you should, it's a classic Demolition Man, drops us right into 2032. The world is, well, let's just say it's super clean. Almost too clean. Everything's peaceful, at least on the surface. Society's obsessed with this thing called verbal morality, where swearing can get you fined. And don't even get me started on the three seashells in the bathroom. Ah, uh, yes. The Three Seashells, a perfect example of the film's brilliant blend of humor and social commentary. The script never fully explains them, does it? But it plays on those very real anxieties we have about technology replacing natural processes, maybe even hinting at a loss of control in the face of progress. Whoa, I never thought about it like that. You see, this is what I love about these deep dives, uncovering those layers you don't always see on the first watch. But before we get lost in the wonders of futuristic toilets, we've got to talk about the stars of the show. We've got John Spartan, a.k.a. the Demolition Man, our very own time traveler from the 1990s. A cop, no less, suddenly thrust into this world of sanitized language and, let's face it, some pretty bizarre customs. Talk about culture shock. Big time. And then on the flip side, we've got Simon Phoenix, equally dangerous, but with a much more flamboyant approach to causing mayhem, you know? No, absolutely. The Phoenix is relishing this future, using it to his advantage. Remember that line Simon says, die. So simple, yet so chilling, especially given the context. Totally. Okay, so we've got this picture painted of this wild, almost utopian future, but with some serious undercurrents bubbling below the surface. We've got our main players, Spartan and Phoenix, ready to clash. Where do we even begin with this script? This script, I swear, it's one quotable line after another. Like, come on, what is this? The goddamn Twilight Zone? Mm -hmm. Classic Spartan. <laughs> right. Pure Spartan. And that little outburst, it actually gets him slapped with a verbal immorality violation. Yeah. Right? A hefty fine, too. Which I think really highlights just how different things are in this future. It's not just about peace. It's about controlling what people say, how they express themselves. It makes you think... If we were dropped into that world, what would W.E. miss the most? What would be the hardest to adapt to? But okay, it's not all doom and gloom in 2032. The script also nails the whole tech side of things, right? Like, they've completely ditched cash. Everything's digital. Even, you guessed it, the three seashells. Speaking of those seashells, mm -hmm. I mean, think about it. This is 1993. They basically predicted cryptocurrency, right? Yeah. The way everyone relies on these codes and digital transactions. It's eerie how much it mirrors our relationship with technology today. Totally. It's like they looked at the internet, which was still in its infancy back then, and went all in. But there's also this underlying tension in the script, you know? Mm -hmm. Like between the super advanced tech and this almost oppressive sense of order. Exactly. It's that contrast that makes it so compelling. Yeah. yeah. And it's most obvious with the scraps, right? This underground group living outside Cocteau's perfectly sanitized society. Right. They're like the embodiment of that question. How much would you sacrifice for comfort and safety? Even if it meant giving up some freedom, some choice. It's a classic dilemma, but they make it feel so real, so immediate. Totally. And then there's Cocteau with his perfectly calm demeanor and that line, intensify your calm. It's hilarious, but also a little creepy, don't you think? Totally. Like on the surface, it's absurd, but it speaks to this deeper unease about conformity, right? About what happens when we try to erase all conflict, all individuality. For sure. And the script does such a great job of balancing those lighthearted moments with these bigger, more thought-provoking themes. Like, it's an action movie, first and foremost, but it also makes you think. Right. It's not just about the explosions and the one-liners. Th those are definitely awesome. It's about the questions it raises, about the kind of future we're creating. Okay, so we've talked about the lines, the characters, this back and forth between control and freedom. But what about the bigger picture? What does the script tell us about the world they imagine, beyond the jokes and the action sequences? So we've dug into the memorable lines, the characters, this whole vibe of 2032. But what about the world itself? It's like its own character, right? This version of the future. Totally. And the script really paints a picture, doesn't it? You can practically see the streets, feel the atmosphere. Yeah. And so much of it revolves around this idea of incredible technological progress 
but with a really rigid social structure on top of it. Yeah. It's like they took the 90s anxieties about where things were going with tech and amplified them. Like, no more cash, remember, everything's digital transactions, codes. It's like they predicted the rise of cryptocurrency way back then. Right. And that's what makes good science fiction so compelling, isn't it? It takes those seeds of what's already happening and grows them into something both fantastical and a little bit too close for comfort. Yeah, the best sci-fi holds up a mirror to our own world, doesn't it? It makes you think about the trade-offs we might be making without even realizing it. Like this whole verbal morality thing. Yeah. On the one hand, yeah, less conflict, but at what cost, you know? It's social engineering taken to the extreme. They sanitize language, but have they actually dealt with the root causes of conflict? Right. It's like you can outlaw spicy food, which they did, by the way. Can you believe that? But you can't erase people's desire for, I don't know, flavor, <laughs> excitement. And that's where the scraps come in. This group living underground, rejecting Cocteau's vision. They're messy, sure, but they represent that spark of rebellion, of choosing your own path. And it's interesting, the script doesn't really tell us exactly what they're fighting for beyond just wanting something different. Which I think is smart. It lets the audience fill in the blanks a bit. Mm -hmm. Ask ourselves, what would W.E. be willing to risk everything for? What would our line in the sand be? So we've got this world of incredible tech, this almost oppressive sense of order. Then you've got the demolition man himself thrown into the mix. It's a wild ride, to say the least. What's the big takeaway here? What do we hope people think about after listening to this deep dive? For me, Demolition Man is a reminder that the future isn't set in stone. It's being shaped right now by the choices we make. Every single day, it asks us, do we really want a world where everything is smooth and sanitized, even if it means sacrificing individuality? Or do we embrace a little chaos, a little uncertainty to preserve our freedom? Yeah, it's more than just a fun, action-packed movie, it makes you think. And that's what we love about these deep dives, right? Taking something familiar and finding those hidden depths. Absolutely. Because sometimes the most thought-provoking ideas come from the most unexpected places. Well said. So to everyone listening, thanks for joining us on this wild ride through the world of Demolition Man. Go back, give the movie another watch, and see what new layers you uncover. And until next time, keep those brains buzzing. <laughs>